Welcome to KMET 1490 AM ABC News Radio and the Southern California Business Report with Yvette Walker, a show dedicated to highlighting successful Southern California businesses and the people behind them. Welcome and thank you for joining Southern California Business Report on ABC News and Talks, KMET 1490 AM, 98.1 FM, and KMET TV. I'm Yvette Walker, live blasting our signal from the center of Southern California, serving a population of over 25 million. Get us crystal clear and on demand by downloading the free live streaming app on Google Play and the Apple App Store. As always, a huge shout out to the team. Mitch, Bill, and Sean, I love you guys. And to our special advisory committee that can be found at www.scbrtalk.com backslash advisory committee. Click on the link and learn about the leaders doing the work. Okay, everybody, today I had slated to interview Mr. Christian Okoye. Unfortunately, due to an illness and him losing his voice, he was not able to make it. So thank you to Michael Krauss, who is president and CEO of GoCal for stepping in to give us a broad umbrella view of GoCal, as well as the event we were going to be speaking with Christian Okoye about, which was the California Sports Hall of Fame Gala and Golf Tournament. Michael Krauss is the president and CEO of Toyota Arena, Ontario Convention Center, the Greater Ontario Convention and Visitors Bureau. He also oversees several signature events that bring a large economic impact to our region, including Route 66 Cruise and Reunion, Christmas on Euclid, and the California Sports Hall of Fame. Christian Okoye and Michael Krauss have worked collectively for several several years on the California Sports Hall of Fame. And since Christian is under the weather today, we have, have asked Michael to join us. Thank you for stepping in at such short notice today, Michael. Thanks so much, Yvette, for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm just sorry I was not able to uh, have Christian join us today. You would have much more enjoyed his his presentation because he's quite a unique individual. But I'll try to do my best to fill in for him. Perfect. So let's talk about your journey. Um, talk about uh, how you have been able to achieve such a great impact in our region and now becoming uh, the president and CEO of GoCal. Well, I've been very fortunate that about 12 years ago when I arrived here at the Ontario Convention Center, which was my first opportunity here, was uh, the city of Ontario gave me this great opportunity. And we created what you now heard in the uh, in Yvette's opening about the uh, opportunities that we've created here, which include the Visitor and Convention Bureau, Toyota Arena, and then, of course, all of those special events you heard about. Uh, Toyota Arena hosts probably 300 active days a year. We're just finishing about a month and a half of graduations. Uh, we, of course, have our regular sports teams. And then, of course, uh, more than 2 million visitors a year join us at Toyota Arena. The Ontario Convention Center has hosts more than 400 events a year, and about a million visitors a year visit that building. So as you can see, we're in the hospitality business. And that's kind of my forte and how it all kind of started. I was brought here to bring all the pieces of that puzzle together. That includes creation of a number of these special events. And ultimately, I was fortunate enough to meet Christian and uh, have the opportunity to work with him on further developing the California Sports Hall of Fame. So tell us what inspired Christian to create the California Sports Hall of Fame. Well, of course, he has a great talent for sports. He, he's, uh, you know, all the way from his childhood, he had great interest in sports. And that led him to his, of course, education. Um, after a very well-known professional career, uh, Christian became, uh, of course, uh, very successful. And he started this nonprofit in 2006. But I don't have to tell you, uh, like with anybody, it takes a lot of time to create these special events and create the opportunities. So we were, of course, able to provide a little help along the way, and that's what we're here to do today. So please talk a little bit about how Krishna Koye's time on the Kansas City Chiefs and as a former Kansas City Chiefs player um, shaped his work with the foundation and other works, including the Okoye Foundation. Well, I think it kind of came to, when he came to the USA, um, he wanted to 
uh, of course, participate in the Olympics, but ended up being drafted to the Kansas City Chiefs. And he had a successful and fabulous award-winning uh, a stake in the National Football League. So, of course, I think that's kind of what gave him the uh, the opportunity that uh, we are now seeing us fortunate enough to experience today. One of his goals, of course, along the way, was to capture the passion of children and young adults in his experiences. And this is something he personally is connected to and what inspired me to work with him was his engagement with the youth of our, of our uh, uh, educational and sports world. Um, of course, he also has personal goals, too. But through the organization's efforts, we've been able to develop the California Sports Hall of Fame to support and promote education and sports education uh, throughout the state of California. Please talk about that mission uh, for the California Sports Hall of Fame and how its mission contributes to um, those uh, to our youth, right? And how um, that mission is um, focused on through the California Sports Hall of Fame. Well, we're very focused on uh, uh, bringing opportunities to the youth who are maybe less uh, may have less uh, opportunity to to uh, fund such an engagement. But I think where he's been very successful was through this program inducting the different athletes, which allowed for the scholarships and stuff to be created. What this event creates is the funding for the scholarships that Christian is so involved in. So that's kind of how it all became what it is today. So please tell us a little bit about how those scholarships are distributed. Are there specific areas of education that the California Sports Hall of Fame um, encourages or supports, or is it a, a broad area for any scholar that is an athlete? Well, it's it's very broad. I mean, uh, the the best way I can describe it is it's open to anybody in any sport, and it's uh, the goal is of course to focus on youth and the younger demographic. Um, by using the connection that he has through a variety of different sports types, whether that be you know basketball, football, soccer, whatever it is, he has been very successful in engaging the different sports uh, genres and bring those key athletes together to help create the funding for those youth who will ultimately receive uh, a scholarship or an opportunity. Um, this this new uh, effort we're putting uh, forth is regarding the CIF, and we're working very closely uh, with our friends at CIF, uh, which to in which to bring that organization in and be more focused on the different genres or different athletic uh, opportunities. So it's going to be kind of a mix of different athletics or different athletic types. So it's not just any one demographic or one age group. It's really over different genres, different age groups. So, um, Michael, paint a picture of the various efforts uh, Krishna Koya has been involved in over the years um, with youth athletics programs and, um, you know, sports workshops uh, to help prepare students and inspire them to pursue, to continue to pursue their education. Well, I think um, I think Christian would be really terrific to answer this, but I'll give you a few of the things that, of course, I think he does. He, of course, who doesn't love sports? Um, everyone participates as an athlete or a fan, some way or another. We're all involved, and I think that uh, people in the community, of course, love that. Let's not forget that we have the Ontario Rain here at the Toyota Arena, along with the Empire Strikers. Our our uh, uh, soccer team as well. Large community draw for sports in the Inland Empire. And in fact, here in Ontario, we're in the process of developing a new sports complex that, of course, furthers that initiative and importance in the sports world. So not only do we have the arena that has uh, professional sports, but we also have a new sports complex that will soon be uh, arriving here in Ontario. And let's not forget a new stadium that's in the works. So there's a lot of athletic opportunity, a lot of youth, a lot of opportunity to go up through the ranks of different levels of sports here in Ontario and in the Inland Empire. 
So going back to GoCal, please illustrate, show us the landscape of the economic impact GoCal has in the region in relation to the Inland Empire. Well, GoCal is a, a, a gigantic marketing engine that basically their primary goal is to bring visitors to the region. So we want all the people to come to see all of these sporting events and all these different concerts and and shows that we do at the convention center throughout. Our goal is to try to bring all of those people to enjoy this content. And while they're here, we hope they'll spend money, stay overnight in our hotels, use our airport, uh, and of course, uh, gain experiences that perhaps they wouldn't get somewhere else in the state. So that's our primary mission is to get them to be here. We generate around 93 plus million dollars a year in economic impact. It's significant, and that is all done through no governmental funding. The Visitor and Convention Bureau is solely funded through its assessment district, which is funded by the hotel industry, funny enough, and visitors who come here. So visitors help us fund our operation, and that's how we do it. So it doesn't take $1 of taxpayer money to do what I'm describing. This is all done through private funding. Please talk about the development of the GoCal effort and how you were able to successfully, you know, intertwine these various freestanding entities, really, when you talk about uh, the Toyota Arena, the Ontario Convention Center and Visitors Bureau. Please talk about that process. Well, back when there's about 100 in the state of California, what we call assessment districts, which are where hotels basically vote to self-impose what is an assessment on themselves uh, to help fund those marketing issue, I initiatives I described. And what they do is they say, go Cal, Visitor and Convention Bureau, go out and bring us more people to stay in our hotels and bring us more folks to the community that will drive tax revenues for the city because, of course, that helps our businesses and helps all of the surrounding businesses in the community. So, of course, that creation of that district occurred back in 2012. When I first arrived here, we created it. And that district has been extended an additional 10 years on top of its original five years. So it is it is well into almost 10 years of operation since we started this, and it has become extremely successful. And it is driving those economic impact uh, uh, numbers that I described. But remember, all of those people use our restaurants, they use all of our different things. And we employ, just in those three entities, we employ more than a thousand people here in the IE, just in those few little businesses. Right. And so the last time we spoke, Michael, um, you were talking about uh, the Ontario Visitors and Convention um, Center and Visitors Bureau. The evolution by adding GoCal on top of it as an umbrella um, has been a, a huge uh, step forward. Um, what do you see as being future steps as the evolution of the economic landscape um, develops in Ontario and the broader Inland Empire? Well, I think creating experiences for the guests or visitors is very important. I think that's where the California Sports Hall of Fame comes in. Um, obviously, we're we're funding we're funding scholarships, special uh, opportunities for youth, but we're also trying to create experiences for visitors when they come here. You know, our our recent accreditation of our Ontario Museum, of course, is very important, and that's one example of something a guest might experience. So. My primary focus is, of course, to continue to expand the assets that we provide to visitors, but also um, to continue to expand on those experiences like the Route 66 car show, where we get almost 250,000 visitors come to that show. And that's a free to the public event, as an example. So the more I can create that energy around all of the things that are the Inland Empire, and we can explain to the world that. The Inland Empire has its own 5 million population. We do not need to go over the Kellogg Hill or to go into Los Angeles to create a great experience for you while you're here right in the IE. You don't have to leave the IE to have an L.A. experience, I guess, might be another way to look at it. Right. So, um, 
<laughs> yes, of course. Um, please talk about uh, the California Sports Hall of Fame and, um, you know, future plans to have a home base and, you know, an actual museum where, uh, pe you know, you could tell the story of legends of um, those that are inducted in the California Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you for that opportunity. I think we're very excited about the future of that. Our goal has always been to create an actual location for the uh, memorabilia and sports uh, 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 opportunities that, that we have received over the course of time with Christian. The goal is to create a permanent location, which we believe will be at the new entertainment district at the Toyota Arena. Um, in that location, we'll ultimately build out a facility to house all the sports memorabilia over the course of the uh, of the course of time that this organization has been in operation. Uh, for example, Christian has already had, I believe, more than a hundred in uh, uh, athletes and uh, media and other industry related folks that have already been inducted, and we just don't have a place for everything. So we're trying to create a place that will be part of our entertainment district. And that will be the perfect location for it. That's the intent is to put it right there uh, adjacent to Toyota Arena, its own home. So I think as we expand the entertainment district around the arena, which I'm very involved in, uh, you will start to see that occur. You'll start to see its permanent home be developed. In fact, we have some initial plans already prepared and ready to go once we create the specific location for it. Wow. Do, do we have a timeline or an ETA on when we can see a groundbreaking for that effort? Well, the groundbreaking of the uh, the entertainment district phase one will occur over this, over this summer, I think late summer. We'll start to see some grading and different things occur near the, on the, what would be the east side of the arena, near the box office side of the arena. M many people know it as parking lot A. Um, on, we expect this piece, the, the uh, Sports Hall of Fame, to not be in that phase. It will be in the second phase, which will be on the south side of the arena. And that we hope to get underway in, the, under, in less than two years. We hope in two years that second phase is underway. It's being moved as fast as they can move it. It just takes a minute to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. We have a lot of exciting components to that piece of the expansion. Absolutely. Um, well, you know, give or take two years. Give or take two years. Well, that's, you know, it'll be here before we know it. So two years just flies by. Thank you for that. Um, please talk about the significance of being home to the California Sports Hall of Fame right here in Ontario, in the Inland Empire. And, um, you know, something that was interesting was the fact that it took uh, a, a Nigerian to uh, come up with the idea and establish it here in Ontario. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I think it really began uh, when Mayor Leon uh, uh, brought Christian together. And remember, uh, remember that um, uh, Christian went to school in Azusa. So he has a little history in the arena, but he also resides here in our region, here in the Inland Empire. He's a resident here. So uh, he's, he's uh, raised his kids here. He's had a life here. So he is not only is he a local, but he has, uh, but he is also a great sports figure. The neat thing about Christian is he's one of the few people who I've ever known who can pick up the phone and get anyone on the phone, uh, any sports celebrity, anybody you want to talk to, he can get them on the phone. And that's because of his long, his his excellent reputation, his history, of course, and all of that. But it all started when I first back when I got here twelve years ago. I met. Christian with Paul, with Mayor uh, Leon, and we had the great pleasure of uh, working together on his, what was for me his first event, but it was not for our city. We'd had it for quite a few years before I got here. So I would say that's how it all kind of started, but it's, we love doing this event at the convention center, and we hope that we're able to do it actually in the Sports Hall of Fame in the future when that facility actually is able to open. We hope it has room for it. Uh, because that will be a lot of uh, this banquet or, or awards gala takes up quite a lot of space. So we want to make sure we have a home for it long haul. I love it. So please talk about your view on sports and the role it plays um, in positively impacting communities and individuals. Well, I think 
you know, listen, it's, it's uh, everybody, as I said before, knows sports. I think it's so important for our youth. It creates that whole culture of uh, caring and, and, you know, working together as a team and all the other things that we all need to know in life. And I think if we don't, uh, if we have any opportunity to engage our youth in both education and development of skills and all those kinds of things, I think we, we should really take it. And I think Christian lives every day uh, sending that message to the youth of our community. Um, it's important to him. It's even more important to us because, of course, we have the great opportunity of partnering with him on this. Perfect. And so please tell us where this year's California Hall of Fame inductee award ceremony is going to take place. Okay, so this is the good stuff. You all have to come. Uh, the inductee awards gala will be Sunday, June 30th, and that'll be at the Ontario Convention Center. We'll be hosting it right here at the Ontario Convention Center, starting reception at four, dinner at five, and you can always go to the California Sports Hall of Fame.org website. But you should know there's a reason to come to this ceremony this year because we'll be inducting six amazing folks. And let me tell you who they are, because that's who really is important. Well, we can um, save that for after the break, you if you like. It? We'll go into detail. Yes, we got to tease it a little bit, but just okay, wanted to talk let's about... Tease it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just wanted to talk about where the venue is going to be this year. And is it the same location every year? Yes, we have been, we've been hosting that here for the last... Virtually every year, except for, I think, one we didn't have it um, here one year. Uh, but we've hosted it all the other years, yes. Perfect. And so what is Christian's role on the day of the inductee ceremony? He does it all. He's the magic man. He's the one who literally uh, does the entire ceremony. We do have a we do have a, an MC who kind of helps him so he can take a break and engage with all the folks. But he is actually the one who is literally uh, up there in front of everybody, engaging with everybody and connecting with the audience. I love it. And so um, I had the pleasure and the honor of attending last year's and it was remarkable. Uh, you know, the the athletes that attend um, just as guests, not even the inductees. Uh, please talk about what some of the guest list looks like. Oh, the guests, it's a, uh, we have a lot of uh, sponsor partners who, uh, who join us on this. So we have major companies as well as uh, the usual uh, political attendees. Of course, we have the mayor, uh, council members uh, from surrounding cities, not just our, uh, not just our uh, Ontario council, but other city representatives as well as county. We also have, uh, as I said, corporations, different key leaders from the different major corporations who join. We have our law enforcement. Our we have all of our uh, all of our different um, uh, uh, different community folks that support, of course, our youth and sports along the way. But we also have a number of the previous inductees will attend. So it's not just uh, the folks that uh, the folks that are inducted this year, but we typically have a good attendance from past years who were past inductees. And please uh, share with us that number of past inductees as well. It's actually right around 100 inductees in the past. And I have every one of the busts, <laughs> all of the, the awards to prove it. I've got every one of those uh, 100 uh, awards because we, we keep one for the museum and we give them, of course, an award that they take with them. So we actually have all of those and we're taking good care of those and making sure that they're ready to go into the museum when we open it. Perfect. All right. So we're going to be hitting a break. Everybody listening today, Yvette Walker here with ABC News and Talks, KMET 1490 AM, 98.1 FM, and KMET TV here today with Michael Krause, the president and CEO of Toyota Arena, the Convention Center, the Greater Ontario Convention and Bureau Center, as well as GoCal, the overarching umbrella, um, talking about the economic impact that GoCal has in our region, and of course, focusing on the California Sports Hall of, Hall of Fame Gala coming up, uh, headed by Christian Okoye, known as the Nigeria Nightmare, when a return.
Cal State San Bernardino is home to the only school of entrepreneurship in California. With globally ranked degree programs, you can start your journey today to become a successful entrepreneur. Learn more and connect at entre.csusb.edu. The University of Laverne is rated first in California for alumni satisfaction. Learn more about accelerated programs offered online and on campus in Laverne, Irvine, Ontario, Burbank, or College of the Canyons. Visit go.laverne.edu. The University of Laverne. Go.laverne.edu. Hi, I'm Dana Rademacher with MGR Property Management. A lot of people wonder about the value that property management has for their property. Property management can include all property types, including residential, commercial, and HOA. It is valuable because property managers are experienced in what can happen at your property. We're aware of liabilities. We're able to do predictive and preventative maintenance. We know what is coming up with the changes in the weather, the seasons, how old certain aspects or different capital projects at your property are. We're able to best negotiate contract pricing, legalities with your tenants, and anything else that you may need to ensure that you're getting the full value of the property. If you're interested in speaking with a representative at MGR Property Management regarding your property management needs, you can visit our website at mgrrealestate.com or you can call our number at area code 909-581-6600 to be connected with a representative. Ontario International Airport is on to a better way to fly with over 65 daily non-stop flights to more than 20 major destinations and the easiest airport experience in Southern California. Visit flyonto.com slash Ontario to learn more about Ontario International Airport today. Hi, I'm San Bernardino County Sheriff Shannon Dykus. If you're looking to start an exciting career in law enforcement and make a difference in your community, we are hiring. Dispatchers, nurses, deputies, laterals, and many more. For a complete list of our jobs and more information, visit sheriffsjobs.com. We are the Empire Strikers, the professional sports team of the Inland Empire. We are a fast-actioned and community-inspired pro indoor soccer team. Our mission is to inspire the Empire. Home games, community events, watch parties, and youth camps are all back. Professional indoor soccer is back. Join us and come watch the greatest show on turf at Toyota Arena or on Twitch. Visit www.TheEmpireStrikers.com for more and any information. Welcome back, everyone. Yvette Walker here with ABTC News and Talks, KMET 1490 AM, 98.1 FM, and KMET TV here today with Michael Kraus, the president and CEO of Toyota Arena, Ontario Convention Center, the Greater Ontario Convention and Visitors Bureau, and a CEO and president of GoCal, the overarching umbrella that serves all. Um, thank you again for being with us, Michael, and stepping in for Christian Okoye. Thanks so much, Yvette. Thanks for having us. We appreciate per- it. <laughs> Perfect. So prior to the break, we, you know, touched on uh, the California Sports Hall of Fame and GoCal and how uh, those two efforts are interconnected and the impact it has on the overall region. Um, very exciting to hear that $93 million a year impact uh, through under GoCal. Yes, it's kind of, it's kind of fun. It's, it's a, it's a, probably a little conservative because I'm a little neurotic about numbers. So I try to, I try to be as conservative as I can be. I'm sure it's a lot more than that, but I, but I want to be balanced and fair. So, so I make sure that I don't go a little too crazy. <laughs> Which I can imagine is difficult, especially when it's your baby. You've been so involved in this and have been the leader in this effort for over a decade. Uh, please, you know, just touch on the evolution of that and what that building prog process has been like for you? Well, I think I'm very fortunate that I have the background that allowed the community to have confidence and trust in me. I think my I came from the hospitality industry. I worked in Los Angeles. I worked in the Inland Empire previously. I had uh, quite a background in hotels and hospitality and transportation, all those different things working in Los Angeles and other destinations. So I think it it was all about there was a trust factor, and I think that the community was kind of 
the hospitality community specifically was kind of hungry for that uh, that kind of experience that they did not perhaps have in the market in the past. And they, I was fortunate that they embraced me and welcomed me and allowed me to just really go to town. I couldn't do it though without this amazing team of people that I have working with me. I have a great marketing team, a great sales team. Uh, these folks make me proud every day, and I'm able to, uh, of course, uh, provide them with hopefully future opportunities and growth opportunities too. So yes, I think it it has a lot to do with what I brought in those days to the market. Now, of course, I've been here so long, I'm part of the furniture, I guess you could say. <laughs> well, you're absolutely part of the fabric. And, you know, really, uh, um, the authority in all things, like you said, uh, convention center, visitors bureaus, transportation as a hub for the city of Ontario, which, as we know, is is a major crossroads for, you know, the Ontario International Airport, uh, the Toyota Arena, so many um spectacular attributes and economic uh, growing uh, opportunities that are really burgeoning in our region. I think it's true. And I think the thing that people, I think, you know, when we took over, I'll use the arena as an example. You know, when when I first took over the arena, I don't think they were doing, you know, 50 events a year. You know, we do over 300 active days a year now. We're the second busiest arena in Southern California. There's no arena that has more active days. And I think we should be very proud of that, meaning we have so much content going on in that building, we barely have time enough to go in and paint the walls, you know, so we have to really make, we really have to be strategic about keeping it beautiful, clean, and nice for everybody because we, of course, are very proud of it. So I think the more we do, the more we engage with activities in those buildings, the better. And in fact, the uh, the convention center is an example has is already back to pre-pandemic performance. It actually did not struggle once we once we were allowed to reopen. It was almost instantaneous that people returned and were ready to continue forward with all their meetings and special events at the convention center. Absolutely, and that was something that I observed that I felt was unique to our region, and that was. All of the entities, all of the businesses, all of the leaders were ready to hit to the ground running when that June, I believe June 15th day to let everybody out again hit. And, um, you know, again, the Ontario Convention Center, the Toyota Arena, and all of these entities here local in the Inland Empire have been just leaders in, you know, adapting and moving forward in spite of the pandemic. Well, I think that proof was in the day, the first day that we opened the arena, the first event we had, we had 5,000 people in attendance of that first day. And that told the whole story. People were ready. They were done with it. They wanted to come back and they were ready to support their local community and businesses. And remember, a lot of people, I laid off a lot of people. And I was so thrilled to be able to bring them all back and give them all so much work so quickly. And that's really a testament to our community and the support we received from that community. Couldn't couldn't say enough great things about them. They are loyal. <laughs> Absolutely, without a doubt. And, you know, as you mentioned, our home teams, uh, the Empire Strikers, the Ontario Rain, and other surrounding, you know, the Quakes in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, please talk about what advice you would give young athletes looking to make a difference in their communities. Well, I think the most, as I would always say is, you know, always remember that, you know, you don't, you know, be who you are, be yourself. Don't let anybody tell you to be something different. I think that's very important. I always say that because I think it's, I think it's so important. And I think it's, um, it's critical in anything you do in life, whether it be just for, uh, for a sport, sport business, whatever it is, never forget where you came from, because we didn't all start here. I didn't, wasn't who I am today without all of those people, both people who, where I was in sports with, my coaches, all my family, friends, my educators, all the different folks that I work with, all of those people gave me these opportunities. I didn't just suddenly one day drop in Ontario as the president and CEO of all these cool things. Uh, these great people gave me great opportunities. And I would add one more thing. It'll be it, one important thing is whether they're, whether they're those individuals, but women and especially women have been exceptionally uh, uh, effective in allowing the growth of, of the young people. And I think we need to remember the importance uh, women play in those growth opportunities. Certainly, 
they had great impact on my life. Uh, I certainly had great uh, women bosses who were super to me and gave me great opportunities moving forward. Not just men, there are a heck of a lot of women out there showing me the way. I love it. Thank you for that shout out to all women. Thank you for that, Michael. We really appreciate it. Um, so speaking of the California Sports Hall of Fame, um, please expand on how you see the intersection of sports and philanthropy evolving in the coming years. Well, I think this will only continue to grow. I think it's, uh, as I said to you earlier, I think the way, uh, the way what is taught during a professional sports, the discipline that is taught, all of those things that they learn along the way uh, through playing in a professional sports team, whether that be youth, you know, uh, youth or collegiate or whatever type of sports you engage in, that really is critical. I think that that teaches us so much. It's like uh, it's like, you know, almost I, I want to almost associate it to some degree with the many things you learn in the structure of military or uh, different kinds of organized uh, uh, athletics and and military is another example, but I think it really is incredible what that creates. So the future, I think, is what we want. All there's no limit to what it can be. I think what this organization will allow us to do is continue to give back to that youth and allow those who would not otherwise have the opportunity to grow and advance in their future athletic careers. And I've seen it throughout uh, the region. Um, I'm very engaged in it with our, with our, of course, our, our sporting events that we book. We actually book a huge amount of sporting events here that are for youth sports in our region. We book other, we book uh, sports facilities in which we bring in tournaments and all other kinds of sporting events. I see that as continuing to grow and expand with our new sports complex, as I mentioned before. But even if we didn't build that, we also already have a huge amount of youth sports opportunity, and that allows these young people to be able to go on to do other, uh, other great things in their future. Think of all the people that have come from this region. It's amazing. Absolutely. And a lot of sports figures have come from our region. And with that said, Michael, how do you see the role of sports figures in promoting social and, of course, humanitarian causes evolving in the modern era in our region? Well, I think that's been, I think that Christian has done a great job of making that connection with this, uh, this Sports Hall of Fame and the inductee gala. I mean, without that, that connection, I don't know that many people would have the opportunity to meet some of these amazing individuals. I think his connection of these individuals with all the successes those individuals have had in their work with youth sports would be would not be what it is today. He has really found the niche that connects the youth to the professional sports side of our world. And don't forget, it's not just the athletes; it's also the other things that are associated with the athletes, the uh, the TV personalities, sports agents, all the different industry uh, uh, related. Uh, folks, that could be everything from marketing to sportscasters to you know, he brings them all together and connects the dots. And I think that's one of Christian's great attributes. Perfect. So now we're going to get into the fun part. Let's talk about those inductees for 2024. Uh, what can guests of the California Sports Hall of Fame Gala expect um, in those inductee celebration? Well, one exciting thing is we I mentioned earlier that we're going to we'll actually have uh, someone helping Christian along the way so he can actually continue to engage with all the guests. And we have the uh, Roy Firestone, who is going to be, he was in our inductee class in 2022, and he is actually going to be our master of ceremonies and provide also some great entertainment for this year's event. I think that's going to be kind of fun, and that'll be a little a little different. We don't always have an MC. Um, so we, we like it when we have the opportunity to have that happen. And then uh, we the inductees are, there are actually gr six great inductees this year. Are you okay if I say it now? Yes, please. Can I spring it on the audience? Let's spring it on. Let's spring it on them. Okay, so let's, as I said to you before, it's not just athletes. So we have a lot of great uh, industry-related folks. Andrew Bernstein, who is a great uh, sports photographer, will be one of the inductees this year. We're very excited about that. 
We have uh, Scott Boris, who is the sport is a sports agent, who will be an inductee this year. We also have uh, Rodney Pete, football player Rodney Pete, who will be an inductee this year, and Marshall Fox, uh, football player, will be an inductee this year. But let's not forget basketball's AC Green will be here this year. So we're really excited to have those uh, amazing folks. And remember, uh, the the gala will continue, of course, to change and evolve every year with new inductees each year. And, you know, I'm so excited to attend again, this being my second year. So please share with us who is invited to go. How can people connect? Uh, where can they find uh, tickets? And um, do are there even any still available? There are tickets available. Uh, you can go to our website, California Sports Hall of Fame dot org, and you can purchase tickets, tables. Uh, if you're still interested in sponsorship, we do have a couple of spaces left for sponsors. Also, don't forget one other important thing. We have a Celebrity Golf Classic on July 1st. So that Monday after the gala, we're going to have an opportunity to play some golf at the beautiful Red Hill Country Club. And this is a new change this year. We're bringing it to Red Hill this year, which we're excited about, a little closer to the convention center. And we're really excited to have it right here in our own backyard. Uh, the shotgun start begins at 10 a.m. And again, you can find information for that on our website and purchase tickets right there. Perfect. Um, I want to give Christian another plug because I understand he's also published a book recently called The Nigerian Nightmare, My Journey Out of Africa to the Kansas City Chiefs and Beyond. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, we're very excited for Christian. Uh, he's going to be uh, doing an actual book signing at our California Welcome Center at Ontario Mills on June 8th. Uh, we op actually operate that facility uh, inside the mall for uh, visitors. It's a new, uh, not a new, but we've been in there for probably close to 10 years now. And we operate guest services for the uh, Ontario Mills as well. But Christian will be right there doing a book signing live uh, on June 8th. And of course, you can also find additional information on our website about that, if that's something you're interested in. But he'll be there on the 8th, and we hope you'll come by and see us. Please share that website address with us again. Yes, for that one, I, you can also do it on the uh, uh, California Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, so you use the California Sports Hall of Fame dot org website, and you'll find information on his book signing as well. Perfect. So, uh, Michael, please share um, the legacy you hope to leave through your contributions to the world of sports and philanthropy and economic development and beyond. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a big question. Well, I if I I hope I I hope that I leave uh, the Inland Empire a better place. I hope I leave it uh, with a lot of happy, uh, happy uh, visitors, and I hope that they can continue to expand and grow all these amazing things that I've been fortunate to work with. This didn't just happen magically. Many people were involved, and I hope that we continue to engage our community and continue to engage the region in learning and and growing uh, all that the Inland Empire can be. I think we, we, could, we are so much better than we have ever been. And I think we want to make sure that the world around us knows how important we are. We want to introduce people who have never been here to greater Ontario. I want them to know how great it is. I'm killing myself trying to make sure they know. So I want to continue that legacy after I'm gone. <laughs> Absolutely. So please share some of those team members. First of all, I need to give a shout out to Sue Oxerart. She was a superstar today, getting us all coordinated on the heels of uh, Christian not being able to make it. But please give us a, a yes. rundown of your top team members. I have some amazing people. I have the I have uh, Sue, who you mentioned, who and Sue, by the way, was my head of marketing. She is retired, and I contracted her to help keep us on track for this. Uh, California Sports Hall of Fame, because it takes an army, it takes a village, you know. Yes. And Sue has been amazing, as always. She will always be a part of this organization and is one of my favorite people in the world. 
We have amazing director of, uh, of marketing communications. Uh, and that young lady is actually sitting across from me to make sure mm -hmm. that I don't screw anything up. But that is uh, Miss Brow. And she, Julie is her first name. And she has uh, been with us for almost, it feels a lot longer, but it's about a year. So she has had some big shoes to fill with Sue. We have, of course, Arlette, who is our head of, Arlette Garibay, who is our head of sales. And she does an amazing job selling conventions and all the special event stuff that we do here at the convention center. We have a great general manager here at the convention center, Shannon Perry. We have a great general manager of Toyota Arena, and that is Gus Legrand. So if you ever need anything from those folks, and I could go on and on and on, but those are some of the biggies. And these guys are a real team, and they keep us moving at 1,000 miles a minute. I love it because that's how fast you guys go with everything, you know, that's happening in the region all at once. Um, with that said, Michael, what message would you like to convey to your supporters and those who are passionate about your causes? Well, I think the most important thing is come see us. Don't be shy. Come see us. Make yourself, uh, make yourself at home. We want these to be like your home. We want you to feel welcome always. And I mean everybody. Come to the convention center, come to the arena, come to our events, and know that you are always welcome here. And we want you to bring your family and your friends and people from out of the community who haven't been here before. Get them exposed to your community and be proud of your community. This area has is should be so prideful of the great things that they have, have here, and I hope that they will all do that. So if I leave any with anything, be prideful about your community and the, the area in which you live. You should be very proud of it. Perfect. And please give us an overview of future goals for GoCal as we look at the next five years. Oh, my goodness. Well, first of all, we have a lot of things coming. We have the entertainment district, which we talked about, that huge expansion of which I will be very involved and am very involved in, adding a variety of entertainment options there, including uh, nightlife and dining and, and uh, hopefully a uh, new performing arts theater to add to our genre of a thousand things we have going on. We have that new stadium I talked about, which I'm deep into right now. We're going to hopefully put a lot of concerts there in addition to baseball. Um, we'll soon be able to talk about all that excitement. And let's not forget about all the new hotels coming. We've got a new convention hotel coming. We've got the Olympics coming in 2028. So we've got just a lot going on. We've got a convention center expansion that we're working on to double the size of the convention center. So I've got a lot to do before I go in. <laughs> my goal is to get all these things open before I retire. <laughs> yes. Well, don't, don't even set a retirement date. Because I got a long we're, way to go. I, we're not I, letting I, you go I, anywhere, Michael. We need to keep you going because what you have been able to achieve in your relatively short amount of time has been absolutely phenomenal for the region, for the city of Ontario and everyone that's connected to it. So thank you so much for your great work, your dedication and your vision. Thank you so much. And we couldn't do it without the amazing cities of Ontario and Rancho Cucamonga. The, the support of those cities really helped make it happen. They're movers and shakers. Absolutely. So with that said, thank you again for being with us and uh, highlighting uh, the California Sports Hall of Fame upcoming inductee gala and the work at GoCal. Thanks very much, Yvette. Take care. All right, you do the same. For everybody listening, don't forget to find us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Check us out on scbrtalk.com. Don't miss my interview with Rodri Rodriguez, President and CEO of Eardor Inc. and Rodri Entertainment, an international entertainment production company. In 1990, Rodriguez created the Mariachi USA Festival, the preeminent and first of its kind event at the legendary Hollywood Bowl. In 2017, the festival expanded to the Austin 360 Amphitheater in Austin, Texas. In 1991, Miss Rodriguez founded the Mariachi USA Foundation, a nonprofit organization committed to keeping the traditional mariachi art form alive for generations to come through intensive music instruction for K-12 through students in California. Next week, we will have Dr. Devorah Lieberman, President Emerita of University of Laverne from 2011 until August 2023. 
who is an accomplished executive scholar, change maker, and influence in higher education. She has led vision and strategy in areas of education, healthcare, workforce development, technology, crisis management, financial sustainability, leadership, fundraising, and intercultural communication. Dr. Lieberman was the first female president of the 133-year-old University of Laverne, a private not-for-profit university in Southern California, serving graduate and undergraduate students in health, education, business, law, and general education. Currently, she leads Lieberman and Associates Consulting domestically and globally. You do not want to miss it. We will see you all next week.